The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome on this, the 11th Sunday after Trinity, and a special welcome to any who are returning to church today, perhaps for the first time, and a particular welcome to, to those who are watching in on our live stream service. As we gather today, we continue to work our way through Matthew's Gospel, and today we are reminded that we are called by Christ to humble servants, to humble service in his name. And so we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon you sins, friend goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria.
God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? 
And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Peter answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May what I speak, what we hear, be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Simon Peter said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Cheryl from the United States was one of the co-workers at a Corimila community summer camp, oh, well over 40 years ago. She and I were placed to work in a ward for intellectually and physically challenged chil children in my hometown of Armagh. I remember her telling me, apropos of nothing, as we worked, that the reason why every single one of us has a belly button is because when we are on the great production conveyor belt in the sky, a quality control angel inspects all the babies and pokes them in the tummy, saying, You'll do! Well, there's a lot of the you'll do. Indeed, you'll do in spite of it all about our Lord's praise of Simon Peter in the Gospel reading of today. Peter is nearly there. But, well, truth be told, he needs a bit of help. In next Sunday's Gospel reading following on from this passage, we will see Peter instead being called Satan by Christ. Get behind me, Satan, Jesus will say to him then. Immediately before today's Gospel reading in Matthew chapter 16, Christ tells the disciples that they are all infected with the leaven, the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. How could they not see who he is, he asks them. After the two massive big feeding miracles, he showed them the 5,000, the 4,000, bigger than the Oristus Gulf Society meal. In today's Gospel reading, Peter is the only one the only one of all the disciples who answers Jesus' question, who do you say that I am? And all of that doesn't sound very promising, does it, for, the, for the, the, the future of the church after Jesus' crucifixion? And Matthew labors the point in his telling of the gospel. But Matthew also writes up at this point how Jesus sees immediately great potential in this baby step of faith today of, by Peter. Very shortly afterwards in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 18, Jesus tells all the struggling Christian communities in the future, meeting in their twos and threes, as he says, as, uh, as at the time of the writing of Matthew's Gospel, that they will have the same authority which is now given by Peter in today's Gospel reading, so that the, uh, the, the, the word will spread from this baby step of Peter. He tells them, the, uh, the people meeting in their twos and threes in, in future Christian congregations, that like Peter, what they bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and what they loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter's baby step of faith 
is seen by Jesus in today's gospel reading as having, therefore, a potential far beyond anything Peter could imagine, far beyond what the later communities around the time of Matthew's gospel writing could imagine, nothing less than the judging of heaven and earth, angels and all, by the church, the ecclesia, the people who are called out by Jesus to be something different and to do something different. Jesus says today to Peter and to Peter's faith, you'll do. This is something previewed in the gospel reading of two weeks ago from Matthew chapter 14 when Jesus told Peter that he could walk on water. And we heard two weeks ago that all went well. As long, we, we, we were told, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus. And then we were told when Peter instead notices the wind and the waves, then things are different and Peter's baby step flounders. But even so, in that story two weeks ago, we were told, Jesus reaches out his hand and rescues Peter. You'll do, says, Peter to Je uh, says Jesus to Peter there, with a helping hand. Well, in this Eucharist today, Jesus is saying exactly the same thing. You'll do, with a helping hand, to all of us. You'll do. Today is my father's anniversary, Bertie Ardis. I would like to say that he was a great man, but instead, I think he was something better than that, a humble man, a man who loved to laugh at himself. He is someone to whom I would have liked to have said, when I grow up, I want to be like you. Well, I'm now 66, and I still want to say exactly the same thing to my father. When I eventually grow up, I want to be like you, humble. Someone said humility is not about thinking less of yourself, but instead it's about thinking about yourself less. In the Gospel reading, Peter says to Jesus, you are the Messiah. He fixes his eyes on Jesus and not on himself. Just as the same as he fixed his eyes on Jesus when he was able to walk on the water and not on the wind and the waves. Humility means this, keeping your eyes on Jesus. All the waves and storms that you and I face today and tomorrow and this week are nothing, nothing compared with what can be achieved, not by me, and certainly not by me alone, but by me and Jesus, or better, by Jesus and me, with Jesus being in charge. And when Jesus is in charge, he fixes our eyes on his presence with us in all the various members of his body. These are all the people around us whom Jesus calls and to whom he gives gifts, working together as one. The great potential that can be achieved by you and me working together alongside Jesus is to do with service, and it is to do with humility. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, St. Paul writes in today's epistle reading. We who are many, he goes on to say, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts, meaning we have ministries, that differ. Take time during this week to be silent before Jesus outside all the waves and storms around you. Let whatever is in you say to him, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ, you are the union of heaven and earth. And then, in your time of being quiet, feel him looking back at you, saying wonderful things to you about yourself, just as he said wonderful things to Peter about himself. Maybe if that last bit... Uh, is a bit of an ask, a bit like trying you trying to walk in water. Imagine him instead saying to you, you'll do, you'll do very well, and here's my hand. 
and then also take time to feel him saying wonderful things to those around you, especially those who are different from you, remembering St. Paul's words, those whose gifts differ from yours. Together, in humility, let us come now to Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The intercessions, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints in your church, we make our prayers to you through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for your church in all the world, for its unity and peace. We pray to you for the Anglican Communion for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia, for the poor Vaux Commune of Northern Europe to which we belong, for the Diocese of Espo in Finland, for this diocese, for Paul our Bishop, for his healing, for Sabrina Cook and Patrick Cullerton to be ordained deacon next Sunday in this diocese, for the parish of Fermoy with Gary Paulson, its rector, for its voluntary youth worker Caroline Smith, for Kingston College in Mitchellstown with its chaplain Tom Sherlock. Renew your promise through Christ your Son that no evil shall prevail against your church. Keep us strong to exercise our various gifts and callings from you in humility and unity. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world you have made, for the nations and refugees of humanity, for this country, for Michael D. Higgins, our president, for all in authority. Grant wisdom and discernment to those who, like Peter, are called to bind and to loose, to unlock the things that lead to fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the communities in which we live and work. We pray for our schools and for all school goers. With the Diocese of this week, we pray for those who are elderly and for community welfare and public health. Use in your service the abilities of us all. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are sick or in trouble. Your Son sent out disciples to preach and to heal the sick. Lay your healing hand upon us all. Renew your gifts in those who have forgotten the self-worth they once knew. Lord, in your mercy. We bless your holy name for all your servants who have died in faith, for family members and friends whom we remember before you in love, for Linda Clark, whose anniversary also occurs today. 
give them our love, that we may continue to grow together in that perfect love of yours. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father Almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the 